This is Todd Coburn of Cal Poly Pomona with lecture 16E of Arrow 3261 on the topic of shearing stresses and beams. Today we're going to look at a number of examples of how to solve shearing stress problems. The two key concepts that we discussed before were the idea of calculating shear flows at any point in the cross section moving from top to bottom and calculating shear stresses at any point in the section from top to bottom. This first example is one we've seen in the other two pieces of this lecture and we see three planks nailed together. We're going to look for the shear force in each nail and we should know by now that this approach is going to be to figure out what's the shear. We see that that's 500 newtons. What is the I? You know how to calculate the I of a cross section. And what is the Q? So the question is, what is the big Q that's feeding each of these nails? Once again, if we make a cut through the plane where the nail holds them together and then identify the area that is cut away from the beam, away from the beam centroid. We can calculate the area of that segment and the Y bar to the centroidal axis of that segment. That will be the large Q, the first moment of the area that we plug into our VQ over I equation. Then multiplying by the spacing of the nails will give us the force per nail. Here's a solution procedure blah, 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 just like we talked about. Here's how it works. We calculate the I as you see in the lower left. We calculate the Q. We see that the Q feeding it is 0.1 times 0.02 times in this case 0.06. That gives us the Q. VQ over I gives us the newtons per meter holding the two segments together and then multiplying by the spacing gives us the total force, in this case in newtons. Here is another example. This is a simply supported beam with three point loads and the first piece will be to calculate the shear and bending moment diagrams. There's the shear and moment diagrams. You should be able to do that by now. Once we have those, we can go and calculate what the properties are. The I of this section is just 1 12th B D cubed. Uh, we can also use the section modulus as we see down there on lower left. If we're actually given the allowable stress, we can just plug into F equals MC over I or F equals to M over S, the section modulus, and solve for whatever the dimension of the beam is. This is just kind of like a tricky reshuffle of a standard problem. The shear stress will be maximum at the centroid of this pro problem, which means we'll calculate the first moment of the area, large Q, of one half the section. Here's another example. We've seen this one a couple times. Looks like we know the spacing, we know all the dimensions, and we have the shear. This is pretty straightforward of identifying the area, calculating the first moment of the area, calculating the I, plugging in to our VQ over I equation, we see that that middle segment, as force that develops in that middle segment flows from the segment itself toward the centroid, we see it's going to have to go through two paths, one at the left nail and one at the right nail. Therefore, the shear flow, little q, will be divided by two, and then to calculate the force per nail, we will then multiply by the spacing of the nails. This is a solution procedure from Baron Johnson, and here it is in numbers. Big Q on the upper left, I on lower left, the little Q on the upper right. Once we have the shear flow, we then calculate the force per inch on each line of nails. This example is using bad nomenclature. It's calling it little f, like a stress. It's not a stress at all. That's just uh, the shear flow q per line of nails. That shear flow 
acts on both lines of nails, the shear flow that's called F here is acting on each line of nails. Therefore, when you multiply by the spacing, that will give you the force per nail, which this text is calling F. We would generally call that capital S for a shear force acting in the nails. This example looks like we have two parts with the exact same dimensions, but they're attached together differently. In the left case, our Q feeding the nail is going to be that 0.03 meter by 0.05 meter segment. And in the right case, the Q feeding the nails will be that 0.005 meter times 0.01 meter area. The Y bar for both of those is the same, the V is the same, and the I of the total section is the same. So we can then calculate uh, all values and the spacing is the same. This is how you calculate the I, pretty straightforward. You guys can do this with your table, is actually a better way than this. We can calculate the Q, the first moment of the area of the upper segment. Use that to calculate the shear flow and then use that to calculate the force per nail. In this example, the I will be the same. The Q is different. The first moment of the area is calculated there on the upper right. Shear flow is developed from that. Multiplied by the spacing gives us the force per nail. If we get a more, what appears to be a more complicated example, this looks like a typical frame section. Any of you that want to be aerospace engineer should not allow yourself to be frightened off by a little cross section like this since this is the kinds of problems we will see in industry. All you got to do is calculate the section properties of this which means the I, the Y bar, and then if we're looking for the load per fastener that attaches the fail safe cord, the fail safe cord is shown colored. Once we have the I of the total cross section and the shear on the total cross section, all we need to do is calculate the force going through these nails by calculating the first moment of the shaded area. So the Q of that, which means we're going to have three terms in our Q calculation. We've got a 1.25 by 0.1 inch part piece. We have a 0.5 by 0.1 inch piece and we have a 0.8 by 0.1 inch piece. Each of those has a different Y minus Y bar to the centroid and once we calculate that we can calculate the force per nail. Right? These are our properties. This is the way we calculate that. Now in this particular case, since we constructed a nice clever table, you'll notice that elements 4, 5, and 6 correspond with the fail safe cord. And so we can just calculate the area of each times the Y minus Y bar of each and add those three together and that will give us the Q. You can actually put this in the table itself. That's all we got. Enjoy.